I said, which way did the wind come from? He says, I don't know. It came from everywhere. And it started to blow. And it started to blow so hard that the side screen started to shatter. They were in stress, okay? By this time, the music team were desperate for their, their instruments. They were running on the, the, the platform behind me and rescuing their drums, their guitars, their violins, and everything. Holy Ghost chaos! That's all it was. I didn't have to make an altar call. I never preached a sermon. Jesus said, stand back, son, I'm coming. And did he come? What? I have never in my life seen it. When the wind was blowing, it started to rain. Can you believe that? Maybe some of you guys have been feeling in a process of preparation and preparation, but the Feast of Tabernacle will be like the Holy Spirit sending you so that you can fulfill your destiny in Yeshua. Come to Jerusalem. Right now we're in Jerusalem. It just happens to be online. Uh, and just be ready to be activated in your calling and your destiny. Receive that anointing and be refilled and be resent as well. Hello, I'm Dr. Billy Wilson, president of Oral Roberts University, co-chair of Empire 21 and chair of the Pentecostal World Fellowship, inviting you to join us and ICEJ at the Feast of Tabernacles this year. I'm looking forward to ministering a fresh word from heaven. I believe the greatest days of revival are before us and not in our past. So I want you to join us as we prepare the way for what God is about to do. I look forward to seeing you at the feast. city of God, Jerusalem, Israel. We are so thankful that you are here to join with us, the ICJ family, along with our special guests this afternoon. And guess what? We are actually on episode number five or session number five, Jurgen. It's amazing. We've been doing this for five consecutive weeks and we are so grateful for, for you guys to be in tune staying live with us since day one as a matter of fact i want to greet people who are online on our social media platforms we've got friends from south africa from indonesia from denmark from cape town um from the philippines all around the world we welcome you here live and and just continue writing down and commenting your your nations so we know where you're coming from and it, just a quick reminder, if you do have your social media accounts on Facebook and on YouTube, we are live right now streaming Care of International Christian Embassy Jerusalem's official page. And we are encouraging you to share those to your personal pages, to groups, host watch parties, tag people, tag friends, you know, and make sure you bookmark this on your pages just because we are sure that there's something valuable that the Lord will impart to you today. So Jurgen, what do we have in store for them this afternoon? I know we have a lot of panelists with us um, from around the world, as a matter of fact. Oh. Um, Absolutely. We have an amazing lineup uh, today. And I think, uh, uh, Tiffany, you know, I, I was amazed to think that we are doing it now five times. That means I think that's half time now. It's only five yes. more to come. And then the Feast of Tabernacles is upon us. So tell us who are. We have very special guests with us today. We are really honored to have them with us from each one of them. So who are they, Tiffany? 
Correct, Jurgen. It's it's crazy, huh? We're actually 50% there. And just so everybody knows, we're saying 50% because in five weeks, starting next week, we are already welcoming the Feast of Tabernacles. Woo! -hoo! If you have like a virtual um, applause right here, I would definitely push that button right now. But five weeks left, and we are uh, celebrating Sukkot here in Jerusalem, Israel. So who do we have this afternoon? We have with us, as you can see on your screens, Pastor Burley Belay, live from Israel. We also have a great friend of the embassy, James Lunny, live from Canada, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, Ananya Naftali, also live from the city of God here in Israel. So we will get to know more about their stories in the coming uh, minutes or so. I'm pretty sure they would have their own personal um, inputs and insights and, and you know value to contribute around the Feast of Tabernacles. But here again, I really want to invite everybody to the feast, right? Because again, it's it's we're counting down five weeks, and what do they uh, have to look forward to? In a nutshell, right? Um, we are producing uh, the very very first ever virtual Feast of Tabernacles this Amen. 2020. All right. Now, at the same time as as the will of the Lord will have it, we're also celebrating 40 years of God's faithfulness at the Christian Embassy. So we're very much excited about that. At the end of the webinar, so do make sure to stay up until the end. Um, we will tackle more of, of what to expect, um, how to register. But if you see on your screens right now, we have the links on, on there. It's on.icej.org slash FOT2020. And you will see the different packages available for you um, and what's in store. Um, we also want to invite everybody who need translation in Portuguese, in, in French, in Chinese and Russian, uh, do join us right now on our Zoom link. That's on.icej.org slash FOT webinar. Um, so you can have your translation options. So Jürgen, would you want to shed light more uh, about the feast and, and what's about to come? Yeah, this year's feast uh, is going to be a very exciting feast of tabernacles. Uh, we are actually producing the biggest program package of Feast of Tabernacles that we ever produced. I just shared it with our guests. We have already now more than 80 seminar sessions. They are covering all kinds of subjects from different issues in regard to Israel, about political lobbying. Uh, we are going to speak about the current issues, what's happening with the, for example, the new treaty with the United Arab Emirates. We also speak about many spiritual themes. Uh, we will have Angus Bakken with us. He give us, gives us a whole th series about being a mighty man in our generation. We will have Suzette Hedding with us. She's going to speak about intercession and prayer. Uh, we have seminars for men, seminars for women, seminars for young people. Um, a, an amazing lineup from different subjects, different speakers coming from all over the world. Plus, we have worship leaders joining us. You know, I'm so excited to have Sinachi with us from Nigeria. You know, she yes. wrote this famous song, Miracle Makers. She will Waymaker. be joining us. Waymaker, exactly. We will have uh, from uh, America um, two or three leading worship leaders joining us, a number of them from Asia, from, Amer from Europe. And uh, it will be an amazing Feast of Tabernacles. And you know, the, the Word of God tells us about the city of Jerusalem, and that makes this year so special in regard to the last 40 years. It says here in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 20, Thus says the Lord of hosts, peoples shall yet come, even the inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord, and to seek the Lord of hosts, I myself am going. And many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. And you know, this is what we have seen year by year now for more than 40 years that nations came from literally all over the world. Every year we have on an average more than 100 nations represented at the feast. They are joining us in. They want to worship God in Jerusalem, and they have very unique experience as they come to Jerusalem. 
And today we are going to hear an amazing testimony what God did to a, a man in Canada and he transformed his whole life and his destiny as he came to Jerusalem to worship God here in that city. But uh, this is going to be an exciting time. You know what, I do believe that even if you cannot physically be here, even if, if you are not able to travel to Jerusalem, you can still be in a spiritual way connected to Jerusalem. And the Christian Embassy is there to provide you that connection, to provide you that um, virtual link to Jerusalem. And uh, your nation will be represented there. Uh, your prayers will be represented there. We have a 24-7 prayer initiative that goes throughout the whole week of the Feast of Tabernacles. And we will pray for your prayer needs. So this is going to be a very exciting time for Tiffany. I like what you said, Jürgen, virtual link. Um, and it's a virtual connection um, from Jerusalem to the nations. And I think it's so appropriate that the theme of this session is connecting to Israel, just because the guests that we have this afternoon has their own testimonies, has their own inputs and valuable insights about how the Feast of Tabernacles is that gateway, you know, from to, to connect the nations to the holy city of God. So without further ado, shall we start it off? with um, our good friend, Pastor Burley Belay. How are you, Pastor Burley? Shalom, Favorite shalom, life. how are you? All is well. You're, you're tuning live from which part of Israel? I am living in Jerusalem, East Jerusalem, at uh, Homa. East Jerusalem, shalom, shalom. Yeah. Okay, so why don't nice to meet to see you. Okay, so why don't you tell us a little bit about how the Feast of Tabernacles is valuable from a, a perspective of a local um, minister here in the land, okay. past years and even at current state. Really, we thank a lot, and uh, we we thank our God for this uh, Feast of Tabernacle. Thank you for the ICEJ also doing is a wonderful job for the Kingdom of God. Since many years, I know. So we are so blessed, really. This ministry is doing, this ambassador is doing a wonderful, a wonderful Feast of the Tabernacles. Because this is, Sukkot is, or oh, oh, Feast of Tabernacles is the three main, main Jewish uh, pre, uh, pilgrimage festivals. This is one of the festivals. Passover, Shavuot, and Feast of Tabernacles. So in the Feast of the Tabernacles, this is the Feast of Joy, the Feast of Harvest for the Jewish people and the, the believers, Messianic people also. It is a big joy for us, really. When I see all nations coming to Jerusalem and marching in Jerusalem and singing and just showing the love of God, because this, is, this makes more gentle the nation's love. And then I just, I, I, every year in the march, I'm just, I saw how the big joy. This is the feast of joy. The feast of harvest. The feast of the, really gathering the people and the nation together. This is a biblical hag, uh, holiday. Israelis were commanded to perform a pilgrimage to the temple. Even you see in the Bible, Acts chapter 8. The Ethiopian Enoch was coming from Ethiopia for this, the feast of the, for, for the feasts to gift us for the temple. That is really very ancient relationship with the Ethiopians. This name is used in the Torah, Hag Asif. That means that the holiday of just gathering. A, a, a Sukkot, Sukkah, Sukkah or Sukkot. In the Sukkot, we just celebrated there, just uh, and sitting there and dwelling there for a week. The first day is the very, very, very rest on like Shabbat, the Jewish, the Jewish law, just in Shabbat. And uh, just on even we were sometimes we were, we were many people are sleeping there also in the Sukkah. A sukkah is a temporary house, like temporary house. You know the Bible that Israel's they came out from Egypt after 430 years slavery time. 
And when they go out from Egypt, they start to live in the sukkah. Sukkah is a temporary place, the house. The God of Israel was dwelling in the sukkah. Sukkah is a place where God was dwelling. Now is the time, this time are really a sukkah. We are the, we are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. So we are representative of God's the festival uh, Sukkot in, in now in our time. So we thank God this Sukkah is uh, the joy. Even even the Bible's written Zechariah Zechariah uh, 14 from 16 to, to 17. From all nations coming for the celebration of Sukkah. If the nations coming to this place and pray and stand with God's commandment, with God's word, even to God just promised to send the rain, rain, hallelujah. We are waiting the latter rain also here today. For just this is also the, the Sukkot is showing us the preparation of the coming of Yeshua. That is really Hoshana, Hoshana, Hosanna. The Sukkah also John 7. Uh, is, is, Jesus was in the sukkah also, celebrate the sukkah. So we are waiting for the coming of Messiah because all the Jews from all nations now gathering in Jerusalem, in Israel. Even we are one of the part coming from after 3,000 years ago. 3,000 coming, more than 3, 000, 2,500 years ago, separate from Jerusalem. Now we are here. This is the preparation of the coming of Messiah. The Feast of Tabernacles is just making, giving joy for the salvation of the, 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 our people. We thank God really. We bless this ministry. We bless this uh, embassy. Let God of Israel bless, bless them, bless you, because you are doing a wonderful fruit of God's commandment. So we thank you. Every nation is really standing with Israel, love with Israel. Really, I know that just you are more than even you are more than jealous, for, more than the Jewish people. I, I can say even more understand deeply what the, the 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 word of life commanded for the nation, for the people, for the Jewish. Even with I thank God, really, God sends message through you to our Jewish people. To encourage us to follow the, our Messiah, Yeshua, our King. He is already to come. We are just, just to prepare the way of the coming of Yeshua, the King of glory to come. So we thank you. This is one of the big message for the Feast of the Tabernacle, what you are doing here. Uh, we are really, I'm so rejoiced in this Feast of Tabernacle. And I'm of one of the part of this of Feast of Tabernacle. Really, I appreciate and I bless you all to be blessed in, in Israel, in all your nation, in all over the world. The one who pray for Israel, the one who coming, the face of a tabernacle with, to stand with Israel, let the God of Israel bless you in your nation and your country. Thank you and God bless you. Amen. Oh, Thank you so much, Pastor Burley, for that very, powerful insight about the Feast of Tabernacles being the Feast of Joy as well. Joy, yes. Ken is, so when I say Ken for our international audience, it's yes in, in Hebrew, right? Ken, so when Ken. you say joy, it's, is it um, Simcha, Simcha, right? Simcha, yes. Simcha. Yeah, so I actually agree with what um, Pastor Burley is saying because when when you were reiterating the the value of the sukkahs that's the tent right the temporary yes, dwelling yes. of of the israelites when they were wandering in the desert to the promised land and it's years, true yes. mm -hmm. it is a beautiful um joyous picture of just god being the keeper of his promises because day after day after day they have been protected they have been provided for right and you're again i remember like the the times that i've been here in jerusalem for the feast of tabernacle in previous years um i would always wonder what are those tents around you know like the white uh curtains in the restaurants and the buildings and the top of the houses everywhere 
Exactly. And and they basically told me the same thing. It's it's a remembrance and, and more than a remembrance, it's a celebration really of the faithfulness of God during this feast. And Tiffany and Burley, you know, when we come live from Jerusalem during the feast, our studio actually will be in a big sukkah. We are building up a big tabernacle in the TV studio. And uh, what is amazing, the backdrop or the backside will be open. And uh, you can look out from this uh, sukkah. You see the Temple Mount, you see the Mount of Olives. It will be a spectacular view. And it will come right from a sukkah from Jerusalem. Wow, that's something I cannot wait to see. And again, the the beautiful thing about this virtual feast that we're doing this October is like what you you mentioned, Jurgen. Um, for everybody who has not been to the feast and who have not been to Israel, we're bringing the the experience to them, you know, virtually. And it's not via a Zoom conference call, but it's straight from a TV studio that would have an overlooking view of the city of God. So that's I exciting. That's an important point right. that you just made. It will not be a Zoom call like we are having it now, but this will be a very professionally produced program that comes every day from Jerusalem. Yeah, so I, I can't wait to, to see that. And I truly believe that um, for everybody who has not experienced this, take advantage of this today. Because we're going to talk about more about what to expect. But we have in our panel as well, James Lunny from, from Canada, a former Canadian MP, um, who I believe uh, experienced a very profound, um, you know, uh, move of the Lord because he has been to the Feast of Tabernacles. So, James, we're going to give you this floor and, and go ahead and share uh, a revelation and the experience that you've had with the Lord in attending the feast in the past. Don't forget to unmute yourself, the favorite line of the century. <laughs> okay, there we go. There you go. Yep. You're perfectly well. Well, thank you so much. And it's a pleasure to join you today virtually from uh, Canada. And, uh, you know, my first feast was 1983. I'd only been a believer for about six years. And uh, I wanted to go to Jerusalem because as a believer, I was reading the Bible and I wanted to come to, well, I wanted to visit Israel because I was following how what's the distance from here to there in, in Israel when Jesus walked here and he walked there. And uh, what is it like? So anyway, when I had that opportunity in 1983 and I heard about Christians coming to join the Jewish people for something called the Feast of Tabernacles and walking in the Jerusalem March and joining the Israeli army and the people and bringing banners and singing praises to God in the streets of Jerusalem, I got excited. So that was uh, 1983, the first time. And I want to just to commend the ICEJ. We're celebrating, as Israel's now amazingly at 72 years, the ICEJ is at 40 years. So again, the impact of ICEJ on the Christian world and inviting people from all over the world uh, to come up to Jerusalem. For me, it was a thrill to see the nations, to join people from all around the world in celebrating uh, our faith coming from the foundation of, of uh, our faith in Jerusalem, the, the center of the world, the heart of the world. That's what I call Jerusalem is the heart of the world. And, uh, you know, it was such a thrill. It was an experience never to be forgotten. And so I was seven years in a row in that period. Uh, every year came back and led some small groups to be part of that celebration. And yes, at uh, one of those uh, celebrations uh, there was a uh, you know we have tremendous speakers from all over the world as you've had in the past and every year tremendous spiritual leaders from around the world and political leaders and i remember uh, hearing uh, ula garvaletta from uh, finland the finnish mp speaking at one of these events and it put something a deposit in my heart god does speak to his people about about influencing and helping people understand that's why i would help bring people every year up to the feast of tabernacles and to Jerusalem, because they come away with a bigger understanding, a better understanding, the most important issues in the world. Why is this tiny little nation in the news all the time? You know, we've got news <laughs> occupying us daily with reports of what's happening health-wise around the world, but Jerusalem is in the news more than any other capital. And I would say to my friends, you know, um, all over the world, there are uh, 
it's the most famous city in the world. There are many places in the world they never heard of Ottawa, which is the capital of Canada. They never even heard of Washington, D.C. But in every place of the world, they have heard about Jerusalem and in every language. So the heart of the world is what I refer to Jerusalem as. So, uh, you know, yes, yeah, so I heard uh, Dr. Ula Yarvaletto and that stirred something up in my heart uh, that eventually led to me taking an opportunity to seek election in 2000. And again, I was elected five times uh, over 15 years. Uh, we have short elections and frequent elections in Canada too, as Israel's been experiencing uh, in a different way. But anyway, uh, so that gave me an opportunity then to enter in as a um, a member of parliament to be the chair eventually of the Canadian um, Canadian Friends of, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm getting ICEJ mixed up here, sorry, the, the uh, Interparliamentary Committee uh, with Canadian Friends um, of is with Israel between the parliaments and eventually the Knesset Christian Allies Caucus, which brought me uh, year after year uh, to meet with other uh, other members of parliament, senators from around the world, and what a thrill that has been over the years. And in the last number of years with uh, ICEJ working um, with the Knesset Christian Allies would bring us up to celebrate the feast there. One of my greatest experiences in parliament was coming with our prime minister and 300 people, uh, Canadians, uh, on the official visit, which uh, was, a, was a real highlight to to see uh, how Israel is impacted. But coming back to Tabernacles, the the, seeing the nations come together is such an amazing thing and uh, and how hearts, when you get together like that, how there is such a tremendous impartation from the speakers to the people, from seeing the sights of Jerusalem, from reading the Bible where it was written, that uh, you come home with a very different perspective on the world and, uh, and meeting real Israelis in the streets, seeing the impact of people carrying the flags of their nations. We used to carry a banner that had a, a Hebrew scripture on it. And it was a great big banner. It was in Hebrew and in, and in English at, uh, from Jeremiah 33. Praise the Lord of hosts for his good, for his mercy endures forever. And, you know, there was dancers on the banner. And there was such joy of impartation through the city. You could see the response from people as the nations came by. And I know Israel had been in such a crucible. Um, uh, you know, a pressure from around the world and occasionally having, well, all too frequently conflicts because of a misunderstanding of the role of Israel in God's purposes. So anyway, I just one, one little incident that happened to me, I'd say people have experiences when they come here and how God does speak to them. But one year, it was 1987, I lost a camera on the Jerusalem March. I mean, there's thousands of people out there walking. There's a little autofocus camera. I was leading a group and there was a lady who got behind so my camera disappeared. I had actually get back to the hotel late. And people grabbed me and said, James, why don't we pray for that camera? Well, anyway, the camera did come back three days later. And you'll say, well, someone in your group found it, right? No. Someone on the bus found it. No. Uh, no, it was an Israeli uh, man picked it up. His name is Dove. Uh, and he goes home and says to his teenage son, Zev, we got to be like we got to be like detectives and find the person who lost this camera. But there was no name. There was no address. <laughs> the case didn't even match the camera. So he called the Department of Tourism asking about, uh, you know what he did? It was pre-digital. So he developed the pictures. And based on those 16 pictures, there were pictures of uh, Canadian flags. That was a clue. Uh, there, was, um, there was a banner that said Christian support for Soviet Jewry, which was a big issue of the day. And uh, so based on those clues, well, he, he called the Department of Tourism. Are there any cr uh, Christians here from Canada? Uh, so so, so uh, they said, what are you, crazy? They're everywhere. We don't know where they are. So uh, anyway, he went to the Benyene Hauma, where the conference was held at the time, with the pictures in his hand. It showed the security and left it. Oh, but because I'd had the whole busload pray the next day, hey, did any of you believe God could bring my camera back? Well, some did, some didn't. Some were kind of noncommittal. But three days later, God brought the camera back. And I was able to bring up a, uh, these Israeli family when they brought it to the feast for the Israeli night uh, onto our bus afterwards and say, uh, hey, everybody, you want to meet the answer to your prayers? And so these folks, uh, Dove and Neely and their family have been friends all these years. Here we are, I don't know, 30 years later, 30, let's see, 87, 13, 33 years later, I still uh, see them. I sit in their tabernacle when I've been there. Every time we go, we're invited to their tabernacle, to their sukkah. Uh, where they always have a full table in their sukkah. 
So there's tremendous things happen. Israel is the heart of the world. And I encourage, I am excited to see what you're planning to do this year, Jurgen, uh, with the virtual feast, because you've got such a spectacular backdrop in Israel, the sites of Israel. Uh, there's nothing like it in the world. And the people living in Israel, the courageous people, uh, you know, it's a tremendous story to tell. And I'm looking forward to seeing what is, will happen with this virtual attempt you're bringing together. And I encourage uh, people, get your friends on board. If you've never been to Jerusalem, that they, uh, you all want to be part of the Feast of Tabernacles celebration. 40 years for Christians to have an embassy in Jerusalem. What an interesting thing that happened all those years ago and what has happened since. And uh, with that, uh, you're going to turn you back over to you. Well, James, thank you so much. You know, I was, uh, we wanted to have another friend with us today and a, a dear friend of yours also, James, uh, Mr. Hanu Takula from, uh, from Finland. And I remember, I always, I will never forget that story uh, when Hanu from Finland was uh, sitting on my side and he said, you know, I'm at the feast, I'm in, pala in politics today because I feel God spoke to me during the feast and you were leaning over. So well, the same thing happened to me and I never forget that. And I just want to encourage everybody who is uh, watching and who is listening to us the Feast of Tabernacles, the Bible calls it, it's a mo'ed, it's a special appointed time. That means that's a season where God speaks and where he is carrying out miracles, where callings are being spoken out about people's life. And I want to encourage you not to miss that opportunity. And James, I want to salute you because you have been standing for decades uh, with the nation of Israel. You have been standing it in the highest levels of politics in the parliament. You have been working together with the prime minister. And I think your role in the parliament, it was I think it was one of the elements that turned Canada for so many years as such a pro-Israel nation as it had been. So uh, on behalf of all of us, we want to thank you for the leadership and the example that you have set to all of us. And uh, it's always, I hope we will see you at least at the virtual feast and maybe next year at the real feast of Tabernacles. Amen. Oh man, I like what, what you said, James, when you say um, Israel is the heart of the world, because it's true, hey? The other session we were talking about how Israel was sort of like, um, what do you call it, Jürgen, the, the time clock, right? Because everything that happens in Israel the whole world is affected in 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 a in a small sense and in the big sense, right? Um, so it's really exciting and and how we relate that to the feast, you know, whatever, however people are uh, related to the feast of tabernacles, it also affects their nations. You know what I mean? So interestingly, you you have this testimony that has brought you to Parliament as well. And how cool is that that you got your camera back after three days pre digital? <laughs> <laughs> P digital is a nice way to say it. Um, but wow, thank you so much for sharing with us um, that uh, marvelous testimony that you've had uh, in, in the past years. And truly, we're very thankful from the embassy and behalf of the embassy. And we look forward to having you again and your 300 plus plus Canadian friends join us at this year's virtual feast. Amen. So, Hanania. We are here this afternoon as well with our good friend Hanania Naftali, who happens to be Israel Prime Minister's social media deputy advisor. And uh, we're thankful that you uh, are available this afternoon. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing amazing. Just had my uh, afternoon coffee, so I'm uh, <laughs> I'm so I'm super excited. Yeah, we're very excited um, for you to have joined us as well. And I know um, you, of course, you've, you've lived in Israel all your life. Is that right? Yeah. Born and, and born and raised, obviously, as a local, you, you have um, a lot of, of things to impart to us of what the Feast of Tabernacles is about and why is it valuable? Uh, is it valuable, you know, to locals and non-locals? And we're, we're just really interested uh, what you have to say around that. So please go ahead. Well, thank you very much, uh, ICJ, for uh, having me. I'm super excited. And I actually want to uh, put an emphasis on the importance of the uh, Judeo-Christian Alliance 
using a story that uh, Christians probably never heard before, um, since it's a, it's a personal story from um, my military service. Um, you know, I served in the Armored Corps in the, in the IDF, defending Israel. Um, and as I was stationed uh, along the border with, uh, with uh, Lebanon, uh, you know, they, they would, they would uh, usually uh, put us somewhere and uh, we would just uh, do uh, our job defending Israel. And, you know, whenever we would uh, find ourselves uh, stationed in these uh, places, um, tour guides would always bring Christian groups to our uh, location. They somehow, uh, well, you know, tour guides, they, they know everything. Um, so they were able to find us and they brought uh, groups of Christians that were uh, giving us uh, snacks, drinks, uh, food, pizza. Um, who doesn't love pizza? I mean, especially <laughs> when you're stationed in the middle of nowhere. So, uh, you know, and I, I always noticed how my uh, colleagues uh, didn't fully understand. I mean, they asked, why, why are these Christians loving us so much? What, I mean, what, what, what's happening here? So, um, and, and, and again, it's something that uh, is new to a lot of Israelis, the, the, uh, this uh, Judeo-Christian alliance, because as, as you guys know, uh, in, in, in history, Christians um, from different uh, parts of the world were persecuting Jews. So to, uh, here in Israel, it's, it's a sensitive thing, but uh, it's something that uh, amazes Israelis nowadays to see Christians loving Israel. It, it actually surprises Israelis. I, I, I've, I've experienced that uh, during my military service. And so I think that uh, you Christians uh, around the world, you have to understand that uh, Israelis love to, uh, to meet Christians. And uh, again, in the military, it was, it was always a, a nice surprise. And it's a very uh, important thing because uh, Christians are the number one supporters of Israel and we are not a minority. So, sometimes the media wants us to think that we are a minority. Um, uh, you know, that the friends of Israel are a minority, but that's, that's, uh, that's actually not true. I think that the number is uh, growing day by day. Millions of Christians that uh, stand with Israel, and I think that the fact that uh, there is this platform that the ICJ provides, such as the Feast of the Tabernacles, where Christians can uh, come to Israel, will uh, used to come physically, hopefully will uh, could come again physically, um, and you know actually uh, feel Israel and and you know meet Israelis, and uh, I think that this connection is something that is uh, pure gold to Christians because. Um, people that uh, know Israelis or, or know uh, um, about my work, they always say, uh, I, I don't know, saying uh, how thankful they are for, for uh, defending Israel. But I'm actually saying that Christians are the ones that are the uh, true ambassadors of Israel because they are uh, meeting with their neighbors in their, uh, in their uh, neighborhoods, countries, explaining the truth about Israel, the, the alliance. So this is something that is really important for uh, for Christians to know that, uh, first of all, we in Israel acknowledge the fact that Christians are the number one supporters. It's something that uh, the Prime Minister of Israel has been acknowledging for many years and uh, has been appreciating. We truly appreciate this this uh, this alliance, and it, I think it's vital, especially in the in in the times that we're living in, uh, where we see historic uh, peace agreements uh, brokered by uh, by historic leaders. So I think that it's something that uh, we Israelis are thankful for. And uh, when there is such a platform like uh, the Feast of the, of the Tabernacles, it's a feast of celebration. Uh, and I think that there is no better way of celebrating it uh, between Jews and Christians together. Amen. <clears throat> to that, I say amen. Jürgen, would you, were you going to say something? Uh, and then, yeah, I was touched by this very personal story that you shared with us today. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, I'm living here more than 25, 26 years. And I do sense there is a change of attitude here in Israel towards Christians. When I came 26 years ago, you know, Christians, these are the people of uh, anti-Semitism and the Holocaust. 
And like you correctly said, the prime minister referrals uh, repeatedly about evangelical Christians. They are Israel's best friend. And I think that's not just the government, but that's also many people in Israel, the population, they recognize there is a new stream of Christianity coming. Is that correct? Yes, and I will add uh, even more to that, that, uh, you know, true Christians will always stand with Israel because when you open your Bible, the word Israel appears in ju ju just about every page. Uh, um, so it's something that is just before your uh, your eyes, uh, our eyes. So I, I, I would also say that, that yes, in, in, in the past there was uh, a, a, a suspicious uh, uh, relation, I, I would say, uh, relationship. But right now, I think that uh, that Israelis are uh, opening up, uh, and uh, it's it's something that is being welcomed for for years. This this historic alliance. Amen. James, would you would you like to ask something to your colleague here in uh, in Israel? You are already unmuted. Oh, I am still unmuted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. No, it's it's fantastic. Uh, you know, I. I delighted to see the efforts uh, that Christians are making also with Aliyah to help Jewish people on their way home to Israel. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, one of our friends from up north there, uh, I'm, I'm Elston, also serves in the military. And, uh, you know, it's amazing to hear the, the testimonies of how God has, uh, well, over the years, has defended Israel through, through the courageous people on the front lines from, uh, from all kinds of assaults. Uh, yeah, I, I just remember uh, in, in relation to that, uh, one of the times when there was assaults from uh, the north, from Hezbollah, and missiles coming down, and I was uh, required to speak in a, uh, in a uh, synagogue in Vancouver. And I just said, you know, people think that, you know, when there's a conflict, the middle of the road is always right. Uh, but I would say where I represented the area on the west coast of Canada, there were mountainous terrain. Uh, and uh, and uh, forestry taking place on the mountains. So there's these logging roads. And uh, and uh, I would say, you know, you might be going up one of these logging roads to a picnic area, but if you're coming around a corner and there's one of these fully loaded logging trucks coming down the mountain towards you, the middle of the road is neither the right place nor a safe place to be. And so, you know, when one of the scriptures that I like to pray related to this is for those on the front lines for Israel is, is that great scripture, Hine Matov, uh, that's a great scripture too. Uh, it's 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 lo lo Israel. He that watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Amen. And so uh, you know, Haim would talk about being in the tunnels in Gaza, there trying to blow up these tunnels, and you know the radio communications and the challenges that that is, and how Israel is faced with such difficulty trying to do what missiles are coming in on her uh, to to respond without killing civilians. Uh, in fact, the last time I was in Israel, our good friends that found my camera had visited Sudrot and brought uh, a beautiful roses, uh, rockets to roses, a uh, little thing that sits on our a beautiful emblem made from the, the, the spent rocket shells and turned into a beautiful rose with a nice red bloom in it. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you guys on the front lines have had to face that and be condemned around the world for trying to defend yourself. In, an, in a very difficult position. And so I know for young people serving in the military in Israel, that's a big sacrifice. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to uh, the young people doing their job to defend the homeland and for God's purposes, for everyone. Because we know when uh, Messiah comes back, well, some of you remember Teddy Kollek, and, and it, nobody's mentioned this so far, so I guess uh, maybe I can mention it. Remember, Teddy, Teddy used to always welcome the Christians. Uh, at Feast of Tabernacles, and he would say, you know, as you, we Jews are waiting for the Messiah, you know, you Christians are waiting for the Messiah, you say he's been here before, so when, when he comes, it's my job as the mayor to welcome dignitaries when they come, so when he comes, I'm going to ask him, have you been here before? And, you know, usually that provokes a good laugh from all of us, and, you know, we don't need to pretend there haven't been differences between our Jewish community and the uh, Christian community, but I think being honest about it, People are looking for authenticity, and I think Israelis are looking for, Israelis are very astute. And uh, we think that it's time that Christians uh, love on Israel, as you mentioned. And I, I just can't, I can't ex ex express how much I appreciate the times that I visited Israel with Tabernacles and with the Knesset Christian Allies, the International Israel Allies, interacting with Israelis and how 
how the heart to heart connection just happens when we walk together, realizing there is only one God, it is the God of Israel. He chose to call himself that, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And, uh, you know, I'm sure the, the issue about the Messiah is getting closer for all of us. And uh, with their, Teddy Kollek is cheering us on as he's watching uh, these events happening, having served Israel so many great years. But also, we want to thank you for standing and serving Israel uh, in your hour and when you're called. Ananya, can I ask you something? You know, the, we are living in amazing times where you see um, United Arab Emirates linking up with Israel and we will speak about that at the Feast of Tabernacles. One of the sessions we will speak with Joel Rosenberg, who has been visiting with many of those leaders in the region. We will have Christians from the Middle East. How do you see that as an Israeli? You know, this, this is a different Middle East today than uh, when I came 25 years ago. Well, it's uh, actually very exciting to uh, the majority of Israelis, I would say, because uh, growing up in Israel, going to kindergarten, to school, they would always uh, teach us about peace. They would always, uh, we would always sing about peace, uh, sending uh, greetings to, to, uh, to our neighbors. So uh, even when I was uh, in, in the military serving and, uh, you know, supposedly, uh, um, fighting terrorists. I mean, not supposedly. I mean, literally fighting terrorists. Um, uh, we we always uh, wished to have peace. So I I, I think that uh, the majority of Israelis are very excited about it. Um, from speaking with my Israeli friends uh, and uh, conversing with them, we already are making plans to <laughs> fly to Dubai to uh, the Emirates and uh, hopefully to uh, other countries in uh, in the Middle East because I think that uh, it's truly historic to uh, see peace between Israel and uh, one of the Gulf countries and uh, obviously at the Feast of uh, the Tabernacles when uh, when uh, Joel Rosenberg will, will speak he has uh, truly interesting insights as well as, as a person that uh, actually met a lot of the leaders in the Middle East so it's something that is truly historic, and we Israelis are super happy and excited and welcoming peace as a as 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 a people that uh, you know were taught uh, since uh, since a young age to uh, seek peace. Well, oh, that's amazing, Tiffany. I am so full of different insights from different people right now this afternoon. And, and we're just really thankful for the different value that's been brought to the table. And Hananya, I remember a conversation that we had a few days ago where you mentioned how the feast, you see this as a bridge, right? As a bridge between Friends of Zion and, and the people in the land. So Absolutely. Yes, I, I, I just want to add on that, that uh, it's to me, uh, in, in the eyes of, of, uh, of, let's say, an average Israeli, this is something that uh, is truly historic to see a, a, a Christian platform that uh, allows Christians and Jews to, uh, Christians and Israelis to come together. So uh, this is truly serves as, as a bridge. And uh, I think that uh, it's a blessing to Israel and a blessing to Christians as well. Um, and uh, yeah, it's important for, to me, it's important as an Israeli that Christians will know that uh, we Israelis uh, truly appreciate this. And uh, it's something uh, really amazing. Yes. And in behalf of the Christians watching all over the world, I think everybody will agree with me that we also appreciate you back. And we have... Um, a piece of our heart connected to Israel because we serve the God of Israel. Amen. So we're, we're just connecting it back to the feast real quick. I see comments from our social media platforms. They're all very excited. We, we can't wait to join the Feast of Tabernacles um, this October. How do we register? Some people have already messaged too. Like we've registered. We cannot wait um, for everybody tuning in. We have the links of the registration posted on your screens. Again, it's on .icej.org slash capital FOT2020. That will be written in the comments as well, both on Facebook, YouTube, and on this Zoom chat if you are with us here in the room. So we are very excited for this October just because, um, as we've mentioned earlier, this session is going to be the first time ever, Jurgen, that the embassy has produced the biggest package, right, for the Feast of Tabernacles virtually. Uh, meaning to say, everybody of you guys 
are able to partake of this celebration streamed live from Jerusalem, Israel, and actually different parts of Israel as well. Um, we're going to be featuring more than 80 seminar tracks. Jürgen, can you imagine that? Before That's we started... information. And you yeah. know, Barry, Barry just made an important uh, comment here in our chat section. Mm -hmm. uh, Barry Dennison, our Vice President for Operation, he said that those seminars, because you, I know what many are thinking, well, 80 seminars, how in the world are we going to watch that during the week of the Feast of Tabernacles? That means you will need to watch 24 hours every day, uh, and then you still wouldn't get through to them. But uh, the good news is that this passage, this package, will be online, will be available until the end of the year. So we understand that it's impossible to watch the whole content by uh, the week of Sukkot, but we will make it available until the end of the year. And uh, this there's a lot of information in it and so a lot of Bible study, many special seminars that really will change our lives. And I think that's a, that's a blessing. And can I take it back uh, to to Burley? You know, I, Burley, I know you are a man in your church and also in your ministry. You have experienced so many miracles, and we heard many many testimonies at the Feast of Tabernacles how people came to the feast, they got healed, they got transformed. Uh, Burley, is there any testimony related to Sukkot to the Feast of Tabernacles that you would like to share? Okay, so we know God is a God of uh, miracle and wonders, really, we believe that. The God of Israel is the God of miracle. Yeah. So we believe when God is with us, the miracles following us. We yeah. persecute God. But when God presences, there is miracles and wonders. All the gift is coming from him, only to believe. Believe and to speak the word of life and what God commands us, really. Uh, uh, you see, from the Old Testament, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the miracles flows for the Jewish people. When many, many people coming from all Syria and all, all nations just getting healing from Jerusalem. Uh, and with, because the healers, he was in Jerusalem and founded in Jerusalem and the truth coming out from Jerusalem. The truth, the word of God coming out from Jerusalem. I believe the word of God is the word of life. What we speak by faith, it will do, it will fulfill. I believe that. That is why just, I, I don't, I, I don't just make doubts, doubts what the word of God says. Just, I apply what the God, God says. The healer is Yeshua, oh God, but not I'm, um, we are not healer, we are not healer, we are nothing, but God is everything. We give to God and to receive and to achieve it, and we can see the fruit of the Holy Spirit what is doing in our Amen. life. Amen. Exactly. And Burley will be joining us during the feast. There will be a, a prayers uh, tent where people are continuously able to come. We have a 24-7 during the whole week a prayer tent available. We will pray for the sick. We will pray for people mm -hmm. who need yeah. miracles. And Burley, we will have you with us. And uh, I know that's something that, which is deep on your heart. And there is another important uh, aspect. And again, thanks, Barry, for sharing that. Um, you cannot visit Israel. That's true this year. Or you can do it only in a very limited way. But we will have virtual tours on this package to 22 different places in Israel. It means you will be able to go to places you might not even have visited when you have come last year or two years ago on a tour to Israel. We are receiving a lot of information and that's not included in those 80 seminars. We are having 22 virtual tours to different sites that comes to us from tour operators, but also the Ministry of Tourism is very kind to support us with a lot of information about different sites. We might have the Minister of Tourism joining us for one of the evenings. So this will be, you cannot be physically here, but you can still see places in Israel, which normally you might not be able even to go as a tourist. So this will be a very spectacular experience. Amen. 
Correct. You know, Jurgen, um, I would say that even uh, during my time, even if we were here physically, we won't be able to take advantage of that option. You know what I mean? 22 different places around Israel is something that uh, you should not miss if you have a heart for the land, um, as well as the Feast of Tabernacles. So, you, I just... You know, you know, one of the places I'm just uh, uh, recalling two days ago, I was uh, in the Nation Square, and then you know the, the, the Kikar Medina here in, in Jerusalem, and that's where the, the, all the national institutions are. And I visited uh, um, Isaac, Herz, Isaac Herzog, the president or the chairman of the uh, Jewish Agency for Israel, and he took me in a room and he said, Jürgen, do you know this is the place well, even before the state of Israel was established, this is where the government was meeting. There was a foreign ministry, there was an agricultural ministry, there was a ministry of finance, and he showed me some of the hidden uh, wooden tablets where things were being hidden when the British came and were searching the building. And that's a place where normally tourists are not going to come. And we have amazing film material we are talking uh, wow. to Bushi Herzog right in that hall and he's telling that story it will be an unforgettable experience and there are many other places David just visited the, uh, the, the, the new tunnel system that was excavated in the city of David mm -hmm. those tunnels actually they used to be the main pilgrimage road where the pilgrims were walking up to the temple Right now, tourists are not able to go there, but we are going to take you there and you will see where Jesus literally walked 2,000 years ago up to the temple during the Feast of Tabernacles. You will see amazing places when you join us. You make me want to buy my ticket right now, Jürgen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a really amazing news because it's, again, that's a very important value um, that we get to uh, partake if we join the Feast of Tabernacles this October, just because we are going to be virtually toured around Israel and not just around Israel, but prominent places at that. Someone was asking from our social media handles, um, how much is the fee? And this is great news for everybody who are wanting to register. Um, usually in the past years, uh, we have the week long celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles held here in the land, um, amounting to more, uh, 490 USD. Okay, but because this is something we want to impart to you straight from the city of God, and we know that every nation should be a part of this grand celebration and feast of the Lord, everything that we have mentioned earlier, more than 80 seminar tracks, right? Virtual tours around Israel, secret and not so secret. We've got VIP interviews from ministers in the land and outside the land. We've got 24 seven sukkah. Pastor Burley mentioned that earlier, how it's a it's a tent and actually our TV studio live stream will also be in the tent. Um, we have this happening 24 seven throughout the feast. So if you want prayer warriors standing with you, we have that part of the package and you have this access up until the end of 2020 and for an upgraded package for one year, all for the whooping price of 50 USD. You're again, I don't know about you, but 50 USD for that amount of value and more is something that's, that's very, um, investable you know what i mean like i would invest in that right now so if you want to register for the feast right here right now we have the link up on our social screens facebook youtube and here in the chat um and we're more than happy and and we really look forward to having you join us this october for the feast of tabernacles we yeah, just want and, to say, and i think you know yeah. tiffany it's important for people to understand that this is an awful that we only have this year. And the reason is very simple, because we cannot have a physical feast. We don't have the heavy costs of uh, uh, renting the Pace Arena in Jerusalem, which is, which is hundreds of thousands of dollars. We don't have to pay for a big sound system and a TV system for this gigantic hall. We don't have to pay for the security that you need in Israel if you have five to 6,000 people coming to one place. So we are saving a lot of costs that we don't have to include in the ticket price. So we are able to make this year a, a, an offer to everybody that is the lowest fees package 
since the existence of the Feast of Tabernacles. It's the lowest price that ever was asked for a Feast of Tabernacles entrance fee. And I know already now this price will not come back next year. And at the same time, and this is thanks to modern technology, we are able to produce the biggest feast still. We have more content, more music, more preaching. We have amazing preachers. We have a Hananya amateur if you know him. Um, Enoch Adeboye, he has, a, he has a church movement in Nigeria when he calls people for prayer meeting in Lagos, Nigeria once a month. He usually gathers between three to four million people on one spot. It's unheard of. It's an unbelievable man of God. And he will be joining us with a message. He provides a seminar track for us. Uh, we will have, as I said, Sinachi from Nigeria leading worship. So this will be an absolutely amazing program. But we need people to register now to join us um, in order to make sure that um, um, we have everybody registered until the feast starts. Correct. Thank you, Jürgen, for actually mentioning um, Enoch Adeboye because for everybody tuning in and for all of our uh, followers who have been with us since day one, his son, Leka Adeboye, is going to be joining us next week at, at the Feast webinar session number six. So actually, I'm, I'm inviting everybody who's tuning in right now, if you can type in the comments, Feast session five, if you have been here since day one, so we can acknowledge your presence. We are grateful to our friends to Taiwan, from Taiwan, Samoa, Indonesia, Sweden, Brazil, you know, all around the world and all nations. We are very happy that you're here with us tuning um, with our friends uh, from Canada and from Israel, uh, just talking about the value of the Feast of Tabernacles. So I think we're beyond our time frame this afternoon, um, but any parting thoughts from our panelists? Super excited. Super excited. <laughs> what the Super future excited. holds. Thank you, Ananya. We're actually going to have Hananya as well, part of the feast. So yes, everybody. exactly. Hananya, you, I'm not sure if you know yet, but you will be with us uh, in the studio. <laughs> yeah, uh, exciting oh, time. Oh. Really? It's an exciting it time. It's great. It's a great uh, event. And also, I, I, I want to appreciate really what is what he, what is God is doing through you because uh, I I know I travel many countries just I saw many many persecution for the Christian uh, the true Christian the true believers because they are you are standing with the truth because the truth not good for this time persecuted in like a Jew in, in everywhere. So I say grace God to give you and the love because just like Jesus, he asked forgiveness in the cross. So I appreciate you. And also I appreciate what you are doing for the Holocaust survivor in the land, Israel, really. It's a great, that is the people that are lost people really. They the needy people. So God bless you all in your fruits, the work, what you are doing for our people. So God bless you, just I want to mention this. Burley, thank you so much. And Tiffany, before we depart, maybe you want to give one more word. If, um, first of all, we need everybody to help. We need everybody to be a feast ambassador and uh, say, well, this is going to be an exciting feast. Invite your friends on social media, follow us on Facebook. Make sure that you are always tuned in to our feast webinar. But there might be people, they say, well, I want to mobilize a number of friends. Tiffany, do we have something to offer people who are becoming our ambassadors? In Hebrew, Jürgen, I would say betak. <laughs> betak <laughs> is, of course, yes. We have this program called the Feast Ambassador Program. And it's interesting. And thank you for, for bringing that up, Jürgen, because a couple of our friends are also asking about that. Should I have groups, right, who I want to register? No, fret not, because this program will give you two benefits. Number one, if you're able to 
rally a minimum of 10 people from your country it doesn't even have to be from your country but 10 people you would be able to refer then first and foremost you will not just have a digital certificate that would certify you as a feast ambassador officially signed by leadership of the embassy as well as discounts for next year's virtual feast so not just that but i'm going to take this further a little bit and we even have a parade your nation um promo where we're talking about group leaders who usually bring to the feast a minimum of 200 300 500 people you are able to do this uh just make sure that you get in touch with us at feast reg at ic ej.org so we can be able to give you the process necessary but if you are able to bring in 200 people from your country then your nation and your country will be a part of the parade of nations during the feast of tabernacles so this is something very uh, crucial and important to our friends from around the world who want their nation represented during the parade. And I think James was also mentioning this in your testimony earlier, how this parade of nations is something everybody really needs to experience. You know, personally, when I came to uh, experience the Feast of Tabernacles in, you know, the very first uh, time, the Parade of Nations was one of the things that really made me see the feast as like a glimpse of heaven. You know, all of the nations represented in one place, worshipping the God of Israel, worshipping the God of the nations, and, and unified in spirit and in truth. And there's a blessing that comes to you, your household, and your country, if your country and yourself is represented in that roll call. So again, if you want to get in touch with us to be a feast ambassador, or you want to parade your nation, Right at the Feast of Tabernacles, do get in touch with us at feastreg at icej.org. So, I guess um, to round our session up this afternoon, uh, we would like to ask Pastor Burley if you could give us the ironic blessing uh, for everybody tuning in from all the nations and James, if if you could uh, just end this this session with a prayer to our God. Thank you. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Pastor Burley. Okay. Uh, really, the, the Bible says, Genesis 2, the one who blessed Abraham be blessed. The one who cursed Abraham be cursed. Now, this is a blessing, ironic blessing. I want you just, uh, I just, I, I use it with the word of God and just God bless really in, in Africa, in every, everywhere really. Only the matter of faith and belief and to receive. This is the word of God. This is the word of life. It is not a man-made word, but God, he spoke it. So we, well, I want to bless you all of the nations are just listening or looking this Zoom. I want to bless you. Yivarechecha Adonai Yishmorecha Ya'ir Adonai Panim Alecha Unecha Yesa Adonai Pani Valecha Veya Simlecha Shalom Shalom Beshua Hamashia Amen Ivarachem Adonai Shmorahem the Kula El Gadol El Kadosh El Rahamin El Leon El Shaddai El Kavod El Shalom El Rafa Jehovah Rafa Ivarachem Kula all Medinot call Ares Bashem Adonai, Bashem Elohe Israel, Bashem Yeshua Mashiach. Amen. 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 And Father God, as we are going from around the nations that are on this call right now, we want to thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you for Israel. We thank you for the miracle of Israel's rebirth in 1948, implausibly, how it came. Uh, back into existence in 72 years Israel has been growing and father we thank you uh, for ministering to us in this time this time where we just come through troubled times all over the world we're in social isolation for many people in a time of fear we thank you that there is good news from Zion we thank mm -hmm. you that there's good news we thank you for the days of awe that are approaching with uh, with Rosh Hashanah the new year with the, trumpet sounding and with the period of introspection uh, with Yom Kippur a time of reflection and repentance 
and Father, then followed by the Feast of Tabernacles. May this period have an impact on the entire world and on your people, Israel at home, and on the nations that love Israel. May those of us who love Zion and long for your appearing, because we know Mashiach is coming. We know Mashiach is coming. And our call, all of us, for the Jews and for the Christians, is to prepare the way, prepare the way. And so, Father, we look to you. We remember your word that says, Hine lo yinum ve lo yishan, ve lo yishan. Uh, Hine lo yinum ve lo yishan, lo yinum ve lo yishan. Father, we thank you that you watch over Israel. We thank you, Father, that you bless our fellowship. We thank you, Father, that you're moving all over the world. The God of Israel is the God of the whole world. We thank you for our understanding of Messiah and our Savior. We thank you that you are ministering to your people in these troubled times and accomplishing your purposes as shaking encompasses the world, Father. May hearts everywhere be turned to you. In the nations, may people look to you at this time. And Father, in Israel, may leaders and influencers look to you, the God of Israel, the God that brought Israel through so many trials. And Father, prepare our hearts for, for everything that's in the future, but prepare us for this season of learning about Israel, for the Feast of Tabernacles that's coming, the virtual expression. And maybe like never before, more and more people will be able to participate because of technology. And may your word go out to touch many hearts in this season of the Feast of Tabernacles that's coming. And may we all experience your presence in the time of tabernacling, that people's confidence in you will grow and their faith in you will grow and their calling out to you will grow because we need your help in times of trouble. And Father, as the word says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will trust in the Lord our God. We pray that will be the rally call for Israel, for the nations, as we face challenging times, that where confidence will be in you and that this Feast of Tabernacles will sow faith into the hearts and minds of people around the world. And we pray this by faith and with thanksgiving. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Dr. James Salani, from, straight from Canada, for being with us. Pastor Burley Bile and Hanania Naftali, straight from Israel, as well as Jurgen. And all of our friends tuning in, do tune in for the next uh, webinar next week with a really good friend, Leke Adeboye, live from Nigeria. So from uh, our heart to yours, Shabbat Shalom. See you next week and register today. And share share this 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 valuable um, um, appointment to your friends. All right. So Shabbat Shalom from Jerusalem. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, "Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. These are my feasts." The 15th day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. The Feast of Tabernacles is not a feast of the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem, but the Bible says it is a feast of the Lord. It is a time when God wants to meet with his people in a very special way. Since 1980, the Lord called the International Christian Embassy to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles here in Jerusalem. Each year has become a time of refreshment for God's people with unique testimonies of healings, of prophetic callings, and even how God is impacting entire nations. This year, because of COVID-19, you will not be able to come to Jerusalem. But today, I have exciting news for you. We will bring the Feast of Tabernacles to you. From beautiful locations right here in Israel, you can celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles in your living room and churches with the biggest program of live events and seminars that we ever produced at the lowest price ever. Join us online from Israel as we begin the Feast of the Jordan River, where John the Baptist started his ministry to prepare the way of the Lord. Experience a global communion service from the beauty of the Garden Tomb. This year, 
your nation can still be represented in Jerusalem for the roll call of the nations from the southern steps, the site that led to the temple in the time of Jesus. See the land of Israel through the eyes of local Israeli pastors and worship leaders. Hear uplifting messages presented by global speakers and international worship artists. Enjoy a vast selection of over 50 uplifting seminars and messages that will change your life. Watch the feast online October 2nd to the 8th, live from Jerusalem, and have access to the content through the end of 2020. Go to feast.icej.org to register and find out more about this year's online feast package. Inquire about how your nation can be presented at the roll call of the nations in Jerusalem. I look forward to seeing you and I'm so excited for what the Lord will do as we join together from around the world to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Register today at feast.icej.org.